In this session, we're going to cover a new topic under the quality system management course called quality by design. So this topic is quite an uh, important topic um, and is the first topic that we cover for this particular uh, session, for my particular session. Because uh, the subsequent topics will be related to this particular topic where the quality by design is the concept and the approach. Uh, and the subsequent topic will further explain this concept and also explain the tools that you can use uh, for this concept. Let's first look in general uh, what quality by design is all about. Um, so quality by design, or in short QBD, is a concept first outlined uh, by uh, by Juran, so Joseph M. Juran. Juran is one of the quality guru in the uh, quality circles. Uh, this is similar to Demings, uh, similar to Schwartz, uh, Dr. Taguchi, so on and so forth. And he believed that quality could be planned and that most quality crises and problems relate to the way in which the quality was planned in the first place. So what, what he's saying is this, is that so Juran believed that quality uh, should be embedded, should be planned uh, in, the, in the product. Uh, and most of the issue that we, that's related to quality in any product, um, uh, actually, actually, uh, being as a result of uh, quality not being embedded in the design stage of the product. So, so I'm saying that you know we should we should uh, look at a quality not as the uh, site uh, criteria uh, when we design a product, but it should be uh, embedded uh, at design stage of the product itself. And, and, and the adoptions of the, uh, the uh, quality by design uh, should be done uh, using uh, a philosophy called first time right. Uh, uh, what, 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 it, what it is, is, is basically you want to make sure that the first attempt that you do to design a product, or to develop a product, should be the, the, should be the correct way should be corrected. I mean, there should not be uh, a rework or much of redesign of a product once it's done with the, with the initial design stage. So, so, uh, so one of the uh, philosophy that uh, embedded in this quality by design is first time right philosophy. And, and it's a proactive and risk-based approach for predictable and predefined quality. So this approach is quite a proactive approach, meaning that uh, most of the, uh, the, um, the quality issue is being worked on at the early stage of, uh, the, uh, of the development, at the design stage itself. So rather than waiting for the subsequent stages, for example, development stage, uh, prototyping, productions, uh, uh, the, the quality is being addressed right up front at the, at the design stage. So, so, it's, uh, so it's, it's a proactive and risk-based approach. So risk-based approach means that the approach that's being taken uh, into consideration for the, for the uh, product design or service design or whatever it is, is based on risk approach, meaning that uh, you cannot have all the information at the initial stage of the product development, which is at the design stage. Uh, some of it is being being uh, you 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 can do estimation. You can do uh, some some statistical analysis, but the risk of of it is still there. Meaning that is you are not hundred percent sure of what the product success going to be or the product quality going to be. But you reduce the risk of failure uh, right up front at the design stage. So that's the approach that's being being used. That's uh, that need to be used uh, for this uh, quality by design approach. Uh, for so the the reason why you want to do this basically, basically because you want to make sure that you have a pre predictable and predefined quality of a product or services that you develop. 
So you don't want to leave the quality uh, of the uh, or the success of the product based on chance. You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that the 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 quality of the product is predictable and predefined right up front at the design stage. Okay. Uh, the 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 in in doing so. So basically, you have to do. You have to include the quality at the planning stage uh, of the process, and the planning stage means that everything is still on paper, you know, at the planning stage, which is uh, which is most often than not is at the design stage. And you need to develop a leading indicator for better controls and to handle quality crisis and problems early in the in the cycle. So. What this means is, uh, using this approach, uh, quality by design, you're going to develop a leading indicator. A leading indicator means that uh, you, you, you're going to define an indicator that will tell you, that can give some, some, some guidance on a potential issue uh, in the future, uh, before the issue is actually happening. Uh, so, a leading indicator for a better control and to handle quality crisis and problem early in the, in the cycle. And the definitions of this leading indicator need to be done at the early stage of the cycle, meaning that at the, at the, at the uh, design stage. Uh, for example, of these uh, leading indicators, uh, so uh, if I'm into a, a manufacturer of a baking, right? So, my leading indicator of whether uh, the product going to be good or not can be uh, how well I control my temperature. Right? So I can I can control and characterize my temperature such that I can look at the temperature, and the temperature uh, can be a leading indicator of what going to happen to the quality of the bread that I baking. So temperature is actually a leading indicator for what for the for the for the quality of the bread that I'm I'm, I'm producing. So, so that also need to be defined upfront, way way upfront, uh, at the design stage, such that when you when you characterize your process, you would have some some uh, indicator that will tell you the health of your of your uh, manufacturing or the health of your of your service. Let's look at some of the definitions of quality by design. So, uh, quality by design is a practice of using a multidisciplinary team to conduct conceptual thinking, product design, and production planning all at one time. So, one of the definitions of the quality by design is a practice of using multidisciplinary team, meaning that this approach requires a, a team, and the team must be from uh, from various organizations in the in the uh, various departments in the organizations. Uh, uh, for example, uh, at design stage, you need to have a team consists of those from you know, design group, from even uh, production, from maintenance, uh, from human relation, from finance, so on and so forth, from marketing, from finance, so on and so forth. So basically, this team need to be there and start to work on at the at the beginning of the uh, at the design stage, uh, at uh, so so uh, the so uh, the traditional way of doing things basically, if it's at design stage, then design engineer need to work on it, but but using this quality of by design approach, you need to have those people. Uh, from different uh, uh, from different uh, departments uh, within the organizations need to be there right? and to work on the uh, uh, conceptual thinking of the product product design production planning all at one time you know, at the same time so basically uh, the design uh, the design work is being done up front and the input to the design group, to the design uh, phase of the product uh, is not only coming from the design engineer but also coming from marketing from uh, from uh, manufacturing from uh, production from uh, marketing from materials uh, department so on and so forth so that you can actually identify 
uh, whatever whatever risk uh, whatever risk or whatever uh, input to the product development right up front at the design stage rather than waiting for it to uh, come to let's say for example uh, uh, production stage to fix and address the, the issue The other definitions of quality by design uh, is uh, not that far different compared to the first, uh, first definition, but it's a bit more detailed. So quality by design is basically a systematic approach to development. So it can be service, it can be product. That begins with a predefined objective. So, so the, the design stage need to have a predefined objectives. Right? So you would know uh, basically, some of the uh, some of the what's what's the what's the uh, customer wants. Uh, so you can turn what the customer wants into into specification. So that's basically objective, and emphasizes on product and process understanding and process control. So the emphasize the emphasis uh, of this particular design uh, design. Uh, what do you call it? Design um, uh, stage uh, is uh, looking at the product and process understanding and process control. So, so when you understand this, then basically you can embed uh, quality into the product, quality into the process, and and ensuring that uh, during operations you have control of the product and process to ensure that the quality of the product uh, 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 consistently uh, 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 meet the, the target spec, right? And, and all these need to be done based on sound science and quality risk management. So, so you, you, the emphasis on the product process understanding and also process control, need to be done to achieve the objective uh, using sound engineering and quality risk management, meaning that the, you must have certain tools uh, on how to, how to ensure that you understand the product, on how, you, how to ensure that you understand the, the, the process, and how do you do a process control. Uh, so this, base, this must be based on sound science and, and quality risk management. And these are some of the tools that need to be used uh, in this uh, quality by design approach. And we're going to cover uh, some of these uh, topics, some of the tools uh, in our subsequent lectures. And towards the end of this particular uh, class, uh, I'm going to explain to you how other topics will be related to uh, quality by, by design. Out there, uh, if you if you look around for uh, for other other topics uh, which cover the simi similar concept and quality by design, you'll find uh, these uh, these uh, methods or this concept. Uh, one is concurrent engineering, or simultaneous engineering, or parallel engineering. This uh, this uh, approach is basically very much related to quality by design approach where it requires you to put a lot of attention uh, at the early stage of the product development, which is at the design stage. And the, the team uh, that work on that particular product development uh, should come from various departments of that particular uh, uh, operation uh, rather, than, rather than just the design engineer. So you address uh, all the issues uh, with regards to the product at the design stage rather than at the later stage of the uh, product development. So if you, if you uh, come across uh, you know, uh, methods such as concurrent engineering, simultaneous engineering, parallel engineering, uh, it's very much related to quality by design. To better understand quality, why the quality by design is very, very important. Why is it important to work on the design, uh, put attentions on the, at the design stage of a product 
rather than wait for it to uh, to to the uh, the uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 phases of product development after that uh, basically is due due to these rules we, uh, this rule is uh, uh, one ten hundred thousand rules uh, so uh, to explain these rules a bit basically if you look at this particular graph uh, so x axis is time y axis is cost of defects fixed meaning that you know how much it costs the company the organizations to fix the defect right uh, so at the at the uh, product definition uh, stage which is the design stage the cost to to fix a defect would be low or maybe is one one dollar it costs one dollar to fix a problem because everything is still on paper right so if you want to change something you just change it on paper so the the so it will not incur that much cost uh, to the organizations but as you go further in the development stage of the uh, of the or the, or the life cycle of the of uh, of the particular product uh, to proof of concept to product development to manufacturing so on and so forth then basically the the uh, the uh, the increase of cost uh, uh, of defect fix will increase tremendously uh, will increase tremendously as um, and and is a, of a multiplier of 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 uh, 10 to the power of x so the, if this is one this is uh, 10 to the power of one is is 10 10 to the power of two is 100 10 to the power of three is 1000 so basically the 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 uh, the, the concept is basically if you want to fix the issue that uh, at the design stage it will cost you one one dollar but if you want to change uh, a design issue a product issue at the proof of concept they will cost you ten dollars right but if you want to fix the issue at the product development stage it will cost you 100 but if you want to uh, fix the issue at the manufacturing at the manufacturing state when when you start to manufacture the product then it will cost you one thousand one thousand dollars so you can see you can see that it's, it's better for you to actually focus on fixing the issue at the design stage because it will result in in less cost to the organizations right? so as you go further and further uh, uh, along the life cycle of the product then the cost to fix the the defect on the product will be much much higher uh, example you know if you are want to fix the issue design issue at the manufacturing you know you might thinking about you might have to change the equipment set you might have to change the fixture the materials so if you have to do that at the manufacturing uh, manufacturing stage then basically you're going to have to change your physical items uh, physical machineries materials so on and so forth so that's why it will cost much uh, more uh, to change a defect at the latest uh, stage of the life cycle of a product compared to at the design stage right? and even worse if you have to change do the, the 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 defect fix at the field when the customers start using it and then you're talking about monetary uh, monetary uh, uh, a penalty that you have to pay but also in terms of reputations of your product so the cost of uh, defect fixing uh, in the field, uh, if the product fail in the field, is much much higher compared to at the design stage. So basically, what you want to do is basically you want to you want to plan the quality of the product right at the at the at the at the early stage of the of the of the product life cycle, which is at design stage. And you should not leave quality by chance. Quality by chance. So this is the reason. Why for the, the reason for the emphasis on the design for quality, uh, uh, concurrent engineering, uh, parallel engineering, where all of them are emphasis, emphasizing the the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, thorough work to be done by the multidisciplinary team at the early stage of the product life cycle, which is at the design stage. 
just want to give some other reasonings why why we need to implement uh, quality by design. Uh, so if you if you compare uh, to this scenario compared to in 1970s, you know, you're talking about in back in 1970s you have uh, fewer product brands, meaning that you have less competitor. If you have uh, if you have let's say for example uh, in the 70s you have a car, uh, then then basically you have you have less competitions, you know, uh, in terms of kind of car, a brand of car out there. Right? So basically, uh, price is equal to cost plus profit amount. It's quite clear cut, you know. So and and since there is no competitor, people will still buy your product uh, even though you are not that uh, your product has some issues, so on and so forth. You know, because uh, is at that time is is uh, is a uh, is a uh, uh, manufacturing market. Huh? So this is, for example, this happened back in 1970s in the in the car industry in the United States, of America. You know, there's not much of competitor back then. You know, uh, Ford is one of the biggest uh, uh, car manufacturers in the world back 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 then. And basically, since there's no competitor, you know, they can produce car. Uh, uh, without, without, and and if the car got some issue, then people just live with it. Yeah? But they still buy. It. But today, it's not the same. You know, you have a lot of competition. So if if uh, if your if your product, uh, 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 if you design didn't design your product well, in the first place. Then when you introduce it to market, then your product will be uh, uh, facing a lot of uh, issues uh, with complaint. Then people will just switch to another product. Yeah? So design stage uh, in the product development create higher higher cost. So if you want to change uh, the the product to address the issue faced by the customer in the market, then it will cost you a lot of money, uh, a lot of money. So so the the price. Uh, is going to be like a cost plus the profit amount, um, which you can predict. But you no, know, you cannot predict uh, the the uh, the uh, the quality issue that that's creating in the that the product is creating in the market if you didn't uh, plan the quality upfront. So because of that, then basically what's going to happen? This cost, this price is going to be fixed, but uh, but cost is going to be is going to be uh, increasing because of the design change that you need to do in the development, uh, in the product development uh, while the product is uh, is in the market, right? So because of that, then basically you're going to reduce your profit amount. So price is fixed because you introduce the parts, uh, the, the the product to the market already. But uh, initially you 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 can estimate the cost, but since the product has issue, then you have to change the design. At the uh, at the uh, at the uh, at the later stage of the of the uh, product life cycle, because of that, this cost will increase. If this cost will increase, then basically your profit will will go down because you cannot change the price anymore, right? So so that's why it's very important for you to have a very predictable predictable uh, product quality, such that you can you can really estimate the cost uh, of the product upfront. Upfront, such that you can maintain the profit amount that the company will will get. So this is another 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 reason why why quality by design is very very important uh, in today's uh, uh, market in today's uh, business. Uh, you must be able to have a, a predictable uh, product quality such that uh, it will not incur additional cost or unforeseen cost. Uh, of the product uh, later on at the life cycle of the product. If it does uh, increase, then basically it will affect the profit amount that the company is going to, going to, get, going to get. So another, 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 another argument why uh, it's, it's important for you to uh, implement uh, quality by design is uh, if you put more time at the design stage, with more people at the design stage, more heat uh, to think about the product design at the design stage, it will result in a more complete final product. So if it uh, results in more complete final product, then it will be less likely 
for you to have a product change, a product design change uh, in a manufacturing stage that could cost you uh, tons of money. As mentioned just now, remember the rule 1, 10, 100, 1000, right? So it could cost 1000 times more if you want to change your product design at the manufacturing stage compared to at the design stage. So it makes more sense uh, to actually put a lot of time and effort at the initial stage uh, of the uh, product uh, development. And with fewer design, uh, once if you with uh, fewer design changes, then then basically you're going to have a shorter lead time. So you have a fewer design changes. You're going to have a shorter lead times of a product development because you don't have to do uh, reiterations of a product design if you if you design it correct at the first time. So remember the concept just now, the philosophy, uh, first time uh, correct. Uh, so first time right uh, concept meaning that you design it you design it correctly so you don't have to you don't have to redesign it so you have a shorter uh, 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 development lead times right so if you can do that then basically it's equals to quicker response to customer need so so the important is basically you need to address the customer concern and the customer needs. So if you if you if you implement uh, quality by design, then you're going to have a fewer design change, a shorter lead time, and you're going to uh, be able to uh, uh, respond to customer need quicker, right? And it will result in a lower reject and scrap, which increase profits, and also you're going to uh, uh, minimize customer returns once you, you put it in service uh, on the field, right? So bottom line uh, for the organization, profit margins will, will increase. So uh, the, initial, the initial stage of the, uh, of the uh, product life cycle, which is design stage, uh, you need to put a lot of efforts, a lot of resources in it. But at the end, at the end, uh, you're going to save a lot of, of a lot of money to the to the organizations, and you're going to increase the profit margin uh, to the organization. As mentioned earlier, uh, quality by design uh, uh, emphasis on the on the work being done at the at the uh, design stage. Yeah? Design stage. So uh, to to elaborate on that, basically, uh, if you look at the comparison between the uh, between the uh, normal practice, which is sequentials uh, on the product development life cycle. So, if you have a, a product development, then usually you start with concept, product planning, uh, design review, prototype, pilot production, mass productions, and uh, and uh, sustenance support. Uh, so basically, this is this is a sequential uh, a way of doing business when you go for a product life cycle. So you 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 uh, design a concept, uh, product planning, uh, then design review, prototypes, so on and so forth. And usually, the people that got involved in different different uh, phase of the product development life cycle will be different people. Uh, at concept, you know, a group will, will, will do it, product planning, somebody else will do it, so on and so forth. But uh, what the quality by design says is this, you know, you need to make sure that the early stage of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, product development is being uh, addressed or, or people from different, different groups actually involved at that particular stage. So, for example, at the product planning stage, in product planning, you come up with the system requirement and design, right? Uh, development prototype, usually at development, pilot uh, productions, uh, pilot production, usually at development integrations, validation, mass production, uh, so on and so forth, system operation. But all these people need to get involved right up front here when you start to design the product planning which is system requirement and design so so the the emphasis of uh, product uh, quality by design is actually 
you know, having a group of people, a team from various, various uh, departments, from, from, from uh, mass production, from support, from prototype, from uh, 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 design, from you know, those departments that's not even here, you know, finance and so forth, actually to, to get involved at the system requirement and design stage, where all the quality issue with regards to the product is being addressed here before the subsequent process. Um, uh, so this is basically the, the comparison between the normal practice, which is sequential, uh, versus the quality by design, where the design work uh, is where, the, where most of the efforts is being put in place uh, in, the, in the design stage of the product life cycle. And, and the people that involve at that particular stage should come from various departments of the organizations. So who should be included in your quality by design team, which will focus at the, at the uh, initial stage of the product designs and planning? Basically, uh, everybody from the organizations uh, that actually has, uh, his, which, uh, which actually will get involved with the product later on, at the, at the later life, uh, later stage of the life cycle of the product, uh, it should be you know a specialist from business engineering, uh, 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 productions. Uh, so productions can be those people that is actually making the product themselves, making the product itself, or uh, those uh, maintenance engineer, so on and so forth. That's actually going to sustain the 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 uh, the the, uh, the production line. Uh, the customer base, so basically uh, marketing people should get involved with it, uh, so marketing should know uh, what is the uh, what is uh, the, uh, the the needs of the customer, what are the issues that they are facing with the current product, so on and so forth. So so uh, you know finance should be here. If you want HR should be here, because you know for example finance uh, should get uh, should have uh, an input in terms of you know. The, the the financial impact of any decisions with regards to the product uh, uh, selection product uh, criteria or product specification uh, decisions and at appropriate time appropriate time you should also um, uh, get involved those people outside from the organizations for example suppliers of the equipment so at the design stage at the appropriate time you can actually ask them to come in because uh, not all the uh, not all the equipment that uh, you have in house um, uh, is capable to produce the product that you want. So you might want to uh, produce uh, uh, you, want, you, might, you might want to uh, purchase new product, or you might want to re reconfigure uh, the the machineries that you have in house to cater for the new product. So you need to get supplier of equipment to get involved upfront. So they can advise you, uh, you know, what are the uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, what are the issue that you might face and how to solve it with regards to the uh, uh, equipment issues so on and so forth. So you should bring uh, uh, you know people from outside of organizations at the appropriate time at the design stage. Uh, of course, you have to uh, ask them to sign uh, non-disclosure agreements so on and so forth so that they won't tell other people about what you plan to design, uh, you know, uh, purchase parts and services. So you can ask those people that actually a vendor, uh, your vendor uh, to come uh, to, to, to be in your, in, your, in, your, in your team, in the design team, because maybe you need certain new materials uh, that you have not uh, uh, used prior to this. So basically, you can get their input at the design stage to make sure that there's no surprises and they can advise you because they are content expert in that particular field. So basically, uh, you need to have as many people from different departments uh, which can view the uh, product development at uh, the product quality, can get input to the product quality at the development stage uh, as many as possible so that you can actually resolve uh, most of the issue that you might face in the uh, in the uh, latest stage of the uh, product development at the design stage. So the quality by design team 
must have a variety of uh, backgrounds and expertise. So uh, you want people with uh, different expertise in your in your in your team. So the more experts you have in your team with regards to that particular product, either from materials, equipment, process, uh, function. Uh, customer requirements, so on and so forth, then basically the better it is, right? And, and all must communicate, meaning that you must enable communications uh, within the groups to make sure that you get opinion from, from various uh, uh, expertise in that particular group. Um, and must stick outside the box and stay flexible. So, so, so the group must be creative. Uh, the, the group must be flexible and accept new ideas in order to have a breakthrough solutions. So, um, this, this, this uh, quality by design team is very, very important uh, at, the, at the design stage because this team is the one that's going to dictate what is going to be the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the specification or the uh, design specification for that particular product and subsequent uh, subsequent detail of how to make the product so on and so forth will depends on that on that uh, technical spec technical specification of the product so you must have a very good team uh, 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 for this particular uh, activity to work well and to expose as many uh, potential uh, quality issue uh, 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 that you might face at the later stage of the product life cycle. Um, and uh, we're going to go through at the later, uh, uh, later stage of this class, we're going to go through a few other uh, few tools that requires uh, uh, the involvement of this uh, quality by design team and especially at the at the, uh, the quality functional quality uh, uh, qfd uh, process in the qfd process quality functional deployment where at that particular uh, stage you have to define the product specification using uh, using a, a, a house of quality concept house of quality uh, in a nutshell, you, know, uh, you need to have a very good uh, team coming from various uh, background and expertise. Uh, you must be able to communicate within the group. Uh, so the, the, uh, the coordinator, the facilitator for this group must be uh, very well trained to make sure that you get input from all parties. And uh, everybody must be uh, uh, flexible, must think outside the box. Uh, in order to come up with a, a new product design. So as I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the concept of quality by design is, is a concept, it's a philosophy of how to embed quality at the design stage of a product uh, lifecycle development. So it has to use certain tools. In order to, to do that, uh, uh, you need to use certain tools. And some of the tools that, uh, that can accomplish the, uh, the uh, quality by design uh, uh, philosophy uh, is going to be covered in this particular uh, classes, in the subsequent classes. So I just want to uh, relate the, uh, the quality by design and other topics that we're going to cover later on in our class. So let's look at the definitions of quality by design that we that I shared with you earlier. So it says it begins with a predefined objective. So you need to come up with the objective uh, of the of the of the product itself. So so objective of the product is basically uh, the the uh, technical specifications of the product. Uh, what it can do, uh, what is uh, what is performance going to be, so on and so forth. And in order to come up with a predefined objective of the product, then there are two tools that we're going to use uh, and cover in this particular, uh, in the subsequent lecture. One is called Quality Functional Deployment, QFD. 
The other one is called House of Quality. House of Quality is embedded under the QFD also. So this is to make sure that to make sure that uh, the 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 uh, the design the product that you design actually meet the customer requirement address the customer requirement we don't want uh, we don't want what this cartoon shows to happen you know? for example this is what the user asked for and this is how the uh, analysis uh, uh, sorry uh, this is how the uh, how the system was designed uh, as the programmer wrote it uh, what the user really wants is this and what actually want what actually works what uh, how it actually works is like this so basically when the when when the customer asks something and this is what the customer really wants right uh, between the customer what what the customer really wants and what actually customer uh, will will get uh, can be a mismatch if uh, due process and proper techniques is not being employed uh, to convert the customer requirement into the final product design. So house uh, of quality and also a quality functional deployment are the two tools that can help us to, to ensure the customer needs are translated into the product requirement. Okay. Uh, in the product and also uh, process understanding, basically there are two tools that can help us to do that. The first one is failure mode and effect analysis (FMEA). So I think this is this has been covered by uh, the previous lecture, uh, the failure mode and effect uh, analysis (FMEA). So this will tell you the detail of the of the product and process and how it might fail. Uh, during the productions so that you can take a proper actions right so this will 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 increase your process and product understanding the other tools that i'm going to cover in subsequent topic is called design of experiment or doe so design of experiment or doe is basically uh, will will tell you uh, uh, the how the process behave and and what happened to the product if the process behave certain way okay. for example uh, if uh, if uh, if i'm in the business of making a bread right so i'm baking a bread so i can tell uh, if i increase my number of egg in the uh, in the formulations of the uh, ingredient of making of, of the of the of the bread then what happened to the softness of the bread you know, if I increase the flour by uh, half a cup, what happened to it, so on and so forth. So design of experiment is a tool for you to understand the process and the effect of that particular change of that, uh, the, the change in process to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the product that you make. And the other part that's being emphasized by uh, quality by design is process control. So for the process control, uh, we're going to cover a topic called Statistical Process Control, SPC, which will actually look at two things. One is process stability and process capability. This is to ensure that uh, you, you have a leading indicator of uh, product health. So this is where you have uh, inline control uh, of, of your product quality. So if there is a, a deviation uh, from certain limit uh, of your input parameter, so for example, in baking, right? So if you set your temperature control at 175, right? So if it deviate away uh, from 175 to 100 and 176, then, then, then the SPC will tell you whether that will make a difference to the quality of the product or not. Right? So maybe uh, deviation one one degree will not affect it, but deviation of uh, let's say for example three degrees will affect it. So so the the SPC will help you to decide you know, what is the acceptable range of uh, process variability, and you can use that. As the as uh, as uh, the uh, as the leading uh, indicator 
to to uh, estimate the impact to the to the quality of the product that you are making. So we're going to cover that uh, using a, a statistical process go through SPC. And this must be based on science, sound science and risk analysis management. So, so this QFD is using risk analysis. You know, you, you, there's a risk analysis being used uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the deployment of uh, the uh, quality F, F, uh, QFD and also house of quality. Uh, failure mode analysis and uh, is, is also uh, uh, look into the risk management. Uh, design of experiment, there are a lot of uh, statistics, which is science, uh, which is sciences being used uh, to to uh, to uh, the, uh, define the optimum conditions of the process. Uh, again, SPC is uh, dealing with the uh, statistic. So basically, this uh, all these tools are based on the sound science and uh, quality risk management uh, uh, analysis. So basically, that's the uh, that's the uh, end of the uh, topic on the uh, quality by design. So uh, reason we cover this uh, topic first in our our lecture in my lecture series, because the subsequent uh, topic will actually support uh, uh, this uh, uh, quality by design approach uh, uh, by being uh, tools uh, to 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 define different objective of the uh, uh, quality by design. So uh, I hope that you have some idea on the concept of quality by design, which is actually to emphasize on the design stage, design stage of the product development, put a lot of uh, people in there, a lot of hours in there so that you bake in the quality. And in order to do that, then basically you need some tools and the tools that you're going to have to use is, uh, for example, QFD, House of Quality, uh, FMEA, DOE, and SPC, which we will recover later on in our in our lecture. So that's the end of this uh, uh, lecture on this particular topic.